Hi, hi. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, English First Additional Language Lessons by Ms. Lituti. Thank you for your positive responses and feedback regarding our lessons here on YouTube. So today's lesson will be focused primarily on uh, a poem titled Meet Time Break. And uh, if you, for you to understand uh, figurative expressions on how to approach poetry, you need to uh, revisit the previous lessons in order to understand because now I'm going to analyze the poem using the very same techniques that I discussed in our previous lessons. Now, the first thing that you look into in order to analyze a poem is that you need to know all your figurative expressions from your comparisons to sound devices to contradictions, all of them from metaphor, simile, uh, onomatopoeia, alliteration, assonance, personification, all of them, you need to know and understand them because we are going to use them to unpack figurative expression from figurative to literal meaning. Now the poem today is titled mid Temp Break by Sims Henny and it's going to be analyzed by Miss Lichuti. In this poem, I want us to focus on the title of the poem because the title says mid Temp Break. What comes to your mind? In order to understand a poem, it is important to analyze the title first because a title signifies the idea, if not the theme that will be discussed in the poem. Now, mid term break, the word term and mid term, term, I'm thinking of a school calendar because we've got term one, term two, term three, term four and so forth. And now you say mid term break, what comes to my mind is holidays, you know? And holidays are associated with a happy mood where we are going to relax and be at home, not do anything, be away from school, pressure and work and so forth. And then, but however, what is contradictory is that the break that we are going to talk about in this poem is not a break of a holiday. Hence, we say that the title of the poem, mid term break, it is ironic. Remember, irony is when you say something, but in retrospect, what you mean is the opposite of what you are saying. So the poem here says a mid term break. It means that we are thinking of holidays, especially school holidays. But here we are talking about an actual break in a form of death, where the writer, if not the speaker, is going to now narrate a poem about the death of his younger brother. And remember that we've got different types of poems. It is important to note that we've got a sonnet, which is a poem of 14 lines. We've got a narrative poem, which, that which is a poem that uh, 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 the speaker narrates in, in, in a, in a poet, using poetic devices and basically tells a story, which is the uh, a case of this poem where they, the, the writer is going to use a, a narrative form to narrate what happened when he was at school until he got home, where he got the news that unfortunately that his brother departed. So the, po the title of this poem is ironic since the contents of the poem doesn't talk about a holiday, but he talks about the actual break in the family where the speaker lost his younger brother. So it is a mixture of both a narrative as well as a descriptive poem. Now, just a brief background about the writer who is uh, Sims Heaney. Sims Heaney was born in 1939 in the Irish poet, writer and lecturer from country London. Yeah, he currently lives in Dublin. Henny was born the eldest of nine children at the family farmhouse called Moosbaun. I, ho I hope my pronunciation, <laughs> my pronunciation here is, is actually right, near uh, Castle Down. So sometimes it's important, especially when you are in grade 12, just to have a brief you know, uh, understanding of the writer, because once you know the writer and the era or uh, the era in which the, um, this writer was writing, it's, it, it becomes easier to understand the phenomenon, social aspects that they were covering in the poems. There was this um, historical poems based on, 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 on maybe apartheid, uh, based on um, um, maybe wars at the time, you know, and so forth. So it is important just to have not even, you don't need to go into deeper details, but just to know just to get, have a glimpse, uh, an idea of what the speaker is all about. So um, mid and break, the poem is about the death of Henny's infant brother, which is Christopher, and how 
uh, people, including himself, reacted to this. So we are going to see the reaction of people, including the speaker himself, with regard to the passing of his younger brother, Christopher. The poem is written from the point of view of a young Henny, someone from school after his brother died. So like I said earlier on, the speaker here is going to narrate how he felt when um, he's going to narrate how he felt the, and the event, um, how they happened, you know, uh, in their chronological order from when he was at school because he was at boarding school until when he got home, where he got to meet his parents as well as neighbors and strangers, you know, when he got to realize that in actual fact his brother passed on. And then here's the actual poem. I'm not going to go through it because I'm going to now analyze it in the po in the coming slides. And um, that's when we'll get to read the poem. Mid-term break. It starts with the, the first three lines. I sat all morning in the college sick bay, counting bells, nailing classes to a close. At two o'clock, our neighbors drove me home. Now, remember I said this is a narrative poem. The writer is telling us what was, what was happening in the morning. He says that I sat all morning in the college sick bay. That means that something was wrong with him. He was not feeling well. He was not in class. So he was in a college sick bay, counting the bells knelling. Now the word knelling is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia are all the words that represent a sound. A bell will ring. The word ring is a sound that is produced by the bell, right? Normally, under normal circumstances, a bell ring. But in this case, a bell does not ring. It is knelling. The word knelling is a sound that was used in the olden days. It's a sound of a bell, especially in church, that was used in the olden days to announce death. So already from the first three lines of the first stanza, we can see that something is not right in this poem. We can, there's, a, there's an element of, of a somber mood, of a sad mood already, because one, he's sitting on his uh, college sick bay, he's sick, the, the speaker is not feeling well, and, and in, 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 the, in the midst of him sitting, he is now counting the bells that are not ringing in this case, but they are how? Nailing. And the figurative expression here is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia are all the words that represent what? A sound. So the if, effectiveness of using onomatopoeia here is to show that indeed we are reading a poem about the death of, a, of the speaker's younger brother, Christopher. So he has, hence here, the bell is knelling, not ringing. And then at two o'clock, our neighbors drove me home. You should be asking yourself this question, why isn't his parents coming to, uh, coming to school to fetch him, but the neighbors are the ones who came to fetch him. That means that again, it shows that something is not right. And then furthermore, they drove him to his home, remember? And then in the porch, I met my father crying. You know, the diction of the poem, dictionic means choice of words, ultimately reveals the tone and mood of what is that is being discussed as well as the theme of the poem itself. Now, when he got home in the porch, just before they could enter the home, in the porch, he met his father crying. Another symbolism of saying that it signifies that something is not right here. He had always taken funerals in his stride and Big Jim even saying it was a hard blow. When you take something in your stride, it means that you are able to soar through problems. You are able to strive through problems. But in this case, because it is the death of his own son, the hands he found his own father crying in the porch, it means that it was a hard blow for him. And it was difficult for him to know, to, to, to really understand that indeed this Christopher is no more. And then, and Big James even saying that it was a hard blow. Remember that in poems, poems rely heavily on figurative expressions. So when you say that it is a hard blow, the word hard blow, if not the phrase hard blow, it's a pun. Pun means, means a double meaning, a play on word. We can have a hard blow where literally somebody beats you up and you say it's a hard blow. And figuratively, it can be a hard blow, meaning that it's a problem or something that happened and is actually difficult for you to, 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 to accept, it's difficult for you to digest, it's difficult for you to go through that. So here, the writers used a pun to say that it was cruel though, not done out of spite, to say it was a hard blow for him to accept that. Uh, death has been experienced before, although not in an easy way. Now, this uh, Henny was driven from college by neighbors. And remember already in the college, he was laying in a sick bay. He was counting the bells that were knelling. The word knelling is onomatopoeia. 
a son that announces death. And then immediately when he got home, he came across his father sitting in a porch crying. Remember, I said this is a narrative poem. The writer is narrating a story in a poetic way. And then um, now in the succeeding lines, pardon me, in the succeeding lines, not only is the father present there, there's also a baby. The baby could and laughed and rocked in the prem. I mean, again, could is a sound that is produced by the baby. It's onomatopoeia. And the baby is laughing. The writer here, Henny here is trying to depict, if not paint a picture of the innocence of the baby. The baby is crying because somehow the baby is detached from reality. He's, he, he is innocent. He doesn't know anything about what's happening here. He cannot fathom what's happening in the house. So here, the, uh, the writer is just showing that the, the innocence of the baby, hence to say that the baby is how laughing, which is contrary to the mood that is painted already here in the poem, because the mood is that of disappointment, of pain, uh, pain of somber. It's a somber mood in a sense that already the, fa the father is crying. When I came in, I was embarrassed. What embarrassed? the speaker, by old men standing up to shake my hand. As a gesture to comfort him, as a gesture to, 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 to try to welcome him back home, but also to give a sense of comfort and condolences, the, and, and of which it's, not, it's out of the ordinary where parents will stand up to greet you. Rather, it's the opposite way kids will stand up to greet parents. But in this case, the older man stood up to greet Henny because now they are trying to comfort him. And he was embarrassed by that gesture because it is quite un unusual. And tell me they were sorry for my trouble. The older man stood up to, to, to shake his hand and the speaker felt a bit embarrassed. But then the reason they stood up was to tell him that they were so sorry for his trouble. What does it mean? The writer here used what you call euphemism. Euphemism is when you use a much more politer expression than a harsher expression. An example can be, I am expecting, is a euphemism of I am pregnant, okay? I am repeating, it's a euphemism of I have failed. So instead of saying, I'm sorry for your death, they are saying here that they were sorry for his trouble. It means that they were sorry for the death of his younger brother, Christopher. So the, in, the line, in this line, the speaker used what? Euphemism, a much more polite expression than a much more harsher expression. Whispers inform strangers that I was the eldest. So in the house, there's a father, there are older men and also strangers around because they're there to comfort the family. And they told them that actually the speaker who is Henny is actually the eldest and he has been away um, at school as my mother held my hand. So he has been away at school uh, because he was attending a boarding school. Um, and then in his and coughed out angry, Tieles says, idea of a long ambulance usually help and, and Jamba men suggesting that she has been crying. So remember in, 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 in Jamba men, that's when now an, an idea will run through from the first to the second to the third line. It means that an, an idea that is sustained in the lines in the poem. And then the mother came to hold his hand and then shown that he coughed out angry tears says, it means that he was, she was breathing heavily to show that he has been crying for some time. Now at 10 o'clock the ambulance arrived when the cop with the cop stashed and bandaged by the, um, I will continue uh, by the bandages and then removed the sense of humanity from the body, no longer his brother, idea that they tried to save him, stashed to stop blood of, or, or, or tears. Now, after greeting the strangers, after seeing the mom and the dad in the porch, now at 10 o'clock, the ambulance came. It came with the cops. Now there's a sense of removal of humanity here because he does not, um, I would say, talk about his younger brother, his deceased younger brother. Uh, referring to him as a younger brother, but he's now directing, if not referring to him as a corpse. So there's a, as an element of humanity that is detached because it's no longer, it's the death of my younger brother, but you say what, the corpse. And then now the, here in this line, the speaker describes the, 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 uh, the, the appearance, if not the, I will say how this, how the corpse is like, he said that stashed in bandages. It means that it would, they tried to save the, the young boy, 
they try to, to, to save him from the accident by, but you can see by the covering of what of bandages, hence the word stash, it means that they were trying to stop blood from flowing. And um, in continuation, it says that next morning I went up to the room and full stop, it says snowdrops. Now the cops have, has arrived at home the speaker now tells us what's going to happen the next day. In the morning, he woke up and then he went into the other room. And then we have the word snowdrops. That's what we call a transferred epithet. What is the significance? What is the symbolism of the snowdrops? Snowdrops are, are actually used here as a symbolism to soothe, to, 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 to offer a sense of comfort to the speaker. And then epithet is a word which makes the reader see the object described in a clear or sharper light. It is both exact and imaginative. So when the writer uses a picture to symbolize something in a poem, we call that epithet. For example, if you talk about a rose, a rose is a picture that may symbolizes the color red or it may symbolizes the color or, or it may symbolizes love. So here the speaker now woke up, woke up rather the next morning and he went to the room and then he says snowdrops and candles soothed the bedside I saw him. So where the corpse was in that room, there were candles as well as snowdrop. Now the, the, the use of these epithets was to uh, uh, transform the mood from somber to that of comforting because candles uh, 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 um, exude light. And then by virtue of having light is a way of soothing the speaker from his grief. And then sense of guilt, realization that things happen while you are away. Henny has a memory of his brother prior to his. And then now what's going to happen there? He said that I saw him, right? And then he says, wearing a poppy bruise on his left temple. Remember, he has a temple just uh, uh, and on the edge of your forehead. Uh, wearing a poppy, I saw him wearing a poppy bruise, right? A poppy signify or, or remembers what it, it's a metaphor the bruise, if not the scar of his younger brother, Christopher, is compared to a poppy, which is a flower. That means that the, the bruise is red in color. Remember that it is important, especially when you are in grade 12, not only are you required to identify the figure of speech, but you are also required to explain its effectiveness. It means that why did the writer specifically use that kind of a figurative expression to carry, if not to convey his idea or to convey his description? So here he says that his brother was wearing a poppy bruise, not only a bruise, but what kind of a bruise? It's a poppy one. The writer used a metaphor. What is the effectiveness of using this metaphor? Is to show the color of the bruise, which is red and to show how this younger brother, Christopher, the deceased, was actually um, and, uh, a, a, a bruised, if not damaged by the, by the accident, because his, he was actually bumped by a car. He lay in the four-foot box as in his court, right? Euphemism does not mention a coffin. Instead of saying a coffin, Again, euphemism, it goes to back to what I said earlier, euphemism, to say that when you use a much more polite way of expressing something that you could have said possibly in a harsher way. So here is a metaphor where now, no, 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 it's a simile, not a metaphor because it has used, it's a comparison that has used the word, the word as. The, the, the coffin is compared to a four foot box as well as a cot. Remember a cot is a small bed where a baby normally sleeps. So the coffin here, it's, uh, 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 it's compared to a court. This also shows that this young boy, the, 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 the young speaker's brother was actually young because even the coffin itself is quite how is quite small. Uh, the God discuss the bumper knocked him clear. Uh, he, he looks perfect, no sign of violence, sudden death. And then um, here we are going to have a four foot box, a foot for every year. What does that mean? This is alliteration. Alliteration in a sense that there's a repetition of F, there's a repetition of F. Remember, alliteration is a repetition of consonants at the beginning of the word. So we have the word F and F. What, does, what is the e effectiveness? What does that signify? It signifies the shortness of, the, of Christopher's life, the disease. 
four foot box, a foot for every year. It means he was only four years old because it's a four foot, a foot for every year. How many foot? Four. So he was four years old. Now, whenever you have analyzed a poem, it is important to identify the tone and the theme. A theme is the what part, what is being discussed. A tone is how was the theme discussed in the poem. Here we read about the theme of loss, the theme of grief. And how is this theme conveyed? By diction, choice of words. We met with, we, we saw words such as crying, um, heart blow, that shows bereavement, that shows that in a, 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 it's a somber mood, it's a gloomy mood. Everybody is serious in this poem. Everybody is sad because they are mourning the, 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 the death of a young Christopher. So if I were to wrap up this poem, a mid-term break, it's a narrative poem with, an, with a title that is ironic to the context of the poem because the title signifies, if not shows, a, a, a happy holidays from the school break. But in actual fact, the break that the speaker, Henny, is talking about in this poem is an actual break from the family where now they have come across a, 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 an unfortunate incident of losing the speaker's younger brother who, who goes by the name of Henny. And then the, 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 the speaker, if not, uh, yes, the speaker started the poem by narrating from the school where he's attending at the boarding school to say even that morning to show that there's nothing happy in the, uh, uh, happy, that signifies joyful moments or happy. Even from the first line, he said that I sat all morning in the college sinking, sick bay, counting bells that were kneeling. And I said the word kneeling signifies a sound that announces death. So already from the first two lines in the first stanza, we could see that something was not right in the poem. And the neighbors came to drive him home. Again, it was questionable why didn't her parents, I mean, his parents came to fetch him themselves. They had to send um, out uh, the neighbors. And then when he got home, the first person he came across was his father. And how was his father? His father was sitting in the porch crying. And Big James said that in actual fact, his father always took funerals in his own stride, but this time it was a hard blow. And I said the word, the phrase hard blow shows a pun because a pun it means a double play on word. A hard blow, a, 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 a literally when somebody something knocks you off, you can say it was a hard blow. But figuratively, something that is difficult to to to, to accommodate in your spirit, something that is difficult to really accept, or something that is painful for that matter, it can be regarded as a hard blow. So even the funeral of, of Christopher was even difficult for the father to do what, to accept. But again, there was a, a, a picture that pointed, uh, painted a, a different mood where we met a baby who was cooing. And I said, the coo is a sound that is produced by the baby. Again, it's onomatopoeia. Remember I said onomatopoeia are all the words that represent a sound in a poem. And the baby was just laughing. That's the, 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 the laughing part of the baby, it shows the innocence of the baby because the baby somehow detached from the reality. And then even when he got home again, remember that he was greeted by men who stood up to shake his hand and, and to tell him that they were sorry for his loss. The phrase sorry for his loss is again euphemism. Instead of saying sorry for your death, because euphemism is when you use a much polite tone than using a harsher tone. Right. And then furthermore, he said the next morning he went to the room. That's why we came again. I, 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 we came across epithets and pathos. Pathos are intended words that uh, the writer will use to convey the emotions, or if not the mood of sadness. Now he went to the room and he was soothed by the presence of snowballs and candle and the light from candles. Those are epithets when the writer uses imagery that symbolizes or signifies something. So he went there and then he, he took a glance at the corpse of his deceased brother. He saw that his brother was wearing a, a, a poppy bruise. And that is a metaphor because the bruise was compared to a poppy, which is a red flower, right? And then he lay there with no gaudy scar to show that in actual fact, he was knocked by the car the bumper of a car. And the last line is said that a four foot box, a foot for every year. It signifies the shortness of the deceased life, which ultimately one can say that he was only four years old. Now, whenever you, you, you analyze a poem and after analyzing the poem, I said it is important to note that or to, 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 uh, uh, to identify the theme and the tone. 
the theme will be grief, will be loss. The theme is the what part, what is being discussed. And then you check the diction. Diction will be choice of words of the speaker. Uh, uh, what kind of words are there in the poem? Are those happy words or, or words that symbolizes, if not represent sadness or gloomness? And then here we come across words such as hard blow. We come across words such as um, we come across words such as um, hard blow. We come across words such as uh, crying. We come across uh, 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 words such as sorry for your loss. So such words they help to paint the mood, the the mood and tone of a sadness, of gloominess as well as a somber mood or tone. So how does the young Henny feel? He felt a lot of things, grief, embarrassment when he was greeted by the elders who stood up to shake his hand and sadness and, and grief. He was also stricken by, by grief. Um, your, in, and, and when you analyze, you must also check the title, you must check the author, you must check the genre, the link to question and your personal questions to, to the poem. So in a nutshell, grade 12, when you analyze a poem, it is quite important to note that, uh, to note, it is quite important to note the title, the figurative expressions that are used in the poem to convey the, uh, the, the writer's emotion, to also check the kind of a poem, the type of a poem, was it uh, a narrative, a descriptive, or a sonnet? And then also after reading now, it is important to identify the theme, which is the what part, and the mood, which is the how part. How is the theme communicated? We check the diction of the words. And then and otherwise, we also have to check, not only will you be requested to identify the figurative expression, but you will surely be requested to also identify, if not explain, and to explain the effectiveness of using those figurative expression like a kneeling. Kneeling is onomatopoeia. Why did the writer use kneeling to signify that there will be death or there is death in this poem? So you, you, you identify and then you explain the effectiveness of the poem. That is the poem Mid-Time Break by Henny. Thank you.